What do these characters all have in common? If you answer rebellious Asian hair streak, you are correct. In recent years, criticism has been levied against the Asian hair streak trope, which is used as a visual marker to distinguish between Asian American characters. The Asian hair streak trope serves as a visual and narrative shorthand to signal to Western audiences that an Asian character fits into a specific archetype. For fictional characters, dyeing their hair can signify rebellion, freedom, and finding their own sense of self. I need to make a clear statement, one I can't go back on or chicken out on, one that everyone can see. And this is my instrument. It says, this is me, this is Lane Kim. That is you, it's black hair dye. Asian American characters with a hair streak often embody the following traits. A rebellious nature and problems with authority being considered cool and edgy by other characters who interact with them, a tendency to be impatient and quick to anger, or being overwhelmingly chill with everything, and having a personality that is somewhat rough around the edges. <gasps> Bad girl hair. In the most egregious examples, the trope is used to camouflage underwritten characters who lack personality. Like the Bratz movie. Bratz the movie is a film so bad it almost swings back around to being entertaining in its like general ineptitude. Exhibit A, the fashionista. I say, imposter stuff. In Bratz, Jade, the token Asian character, and my personal favorite Bratz doll when I was a kid, has a stereotypically strict Asian mom who prevents her from expressing herself. Remember Jade, you have Natlips, Science Club, Human, and Violin. Like all of the Bratz characters, Jade has a passion for fashion. I have a passion for fashion. But unlike her friends, she's forced to hide her true self from her family. As is common with the trope, the divide between Jade's external identity and her internal sense of self is blamed on her cultural background. It should also be noted that it's completely unclear what Jade's specific cultural identity is. She's just vaguely Asian. This is who you think she is. This is who she is. I'm not either of those girls Meredith showed you. I'm both. I love science and math and my parents but I have a passion for fashion. It's how I express who I am. And if I can't do that, I'm nobody. Another example of the rebellious Asian hair streak is Stella from Lemonade Mouth, the 2011 Disney Channel original movie that asks the question, what if the teens in The Breakfast Club started a band instead of getting blazed in the school library? Stella Yamada, played by Haley Kiyoko, is essentially the Judd Nelson of the group. She's rebellious, tempestuous, and values self-expression above anything else. I'm afraid that shirt is... What? Is there a dress code here? There is an unwritten line, and that shirt crosses it. <laughs> what about freedom of expression? Do you have that here? Stella. Stella Yamada isn't an especially harmful example of this trope, but as with most DCOMs, the movie itself just happens to not be very good, and basically all of its characters are lacking in complexity. In X-Men Apocalypse, Psylocke is a mutant played by Olivia Munn, and she is, like, barely even a character. I cannot stress how much not a character Psylocke is in this movie. To be clear, this movie is just like hot nonsense and Psylocke's essentially there to stand beside the film's villain Apocalypse and do purple light tricks. She becomes more interesting when she tries to take out Apocalypse, but then it turns out to be Jennifer Lawrence's character Mystique in disguise. So you know, we get to see an Asian woman get choked out on screen for no reason. At the end of the movie, Psylocke literally just disappears into the unknown, never to be heard from again. The X-Men franchise in particular loves using the Asian hair streak for characters who have no personality, unique characteristics, or individual storylines. Blink and Yukio are two examples of this. Now to get to the examples of the Asian hair streak trope that I actually mostly kind of like. I started with the more egregious offenders, but the following characters all at least attempt to reckon with Asian stereotypes. In Glee, Tina Cohen Chang is a talented singer, but when she's not performing, she's depicted as shy and has a stutter until episode 9. Similar to the other characters portrayed through this trope, Tina's hair and clothing style is a core part of her identity. Miss Cohen Chang, you've got to find yourself another style of dress. Hold on a second. Tina is shy, and one way she's found to express herself is through her clothes. Over the six season chaotic gay mess that was Glee, Tina eventually loses the hair streak and comes out of her shell. But I will still never forget the crimes that Glee committed. 
I would be remiss if I didn't include the most infamous example of this trope. Knives Chow from Scott Pilgrim. Knives Chow? She's Chinese. Wicked. When we first meet Knives, she's a decidedly uncool 17-year-old girl. Her adult boyfriend, Scott, takes advantage of the fact that she's significantly younger than him and enjoys explaining obscure video game facts to her and knowing more about cool music. When Knives realizes that Scott is developing a crush on the local hip white girl, Ramona Flowers, she starts mimicking her style, cutting her hair like Ramona, and wearing similar clothes. Oh my god! He's dating a baddest hipster chick. I hate her stupid gut. She's got a head start. I mean, I didn't even know there was good music until like two months ago. He just really burns. You should have rinsed. Oh god, I look so good. I should point out that Brian Lee O'Malley, the creator of the Scott Pilgrim series and Knife Chow's character, is Korean Canadian. And unlike other characters who dye their hair to visually express their personality, Knife subverts the trope in the sense that her hair streak is in direct conflict with her own internal sense of identity. She doesn't dye her hair as a form of self expression, she dyes her hair to imitate Ramona so Scott will like her more. Instead, Knives' growth happens when she starts to come out of her shell. Throughout the movie, there's a running joke with Scott telling Knives to be good around his older friends friends despite Knives being very quiet and submissive. I'll be quieter. However, it's still worth examining the fact that Knives is weirdly racialized throughout the movie. She's Chinese. Even though you could make the argument that the film's POV isn't aligned with Scott or the other white characters' racist microaggressions because they're supposed to be terrible, the movie still creates a binary that contrasts Knives' uncool Asian identity with her proximity to her older white peers' comparatively cooler interests, knowledge, and aesthetics. I debated about including Gilmore Girls because Lane Kim doesn't technically have a hair streak, but it feels like she has a hair streak, you know? Plus she does have one for her gig in season six, so I'm counting it. The bleach is gonna stink up the whole house. Let it, let it be the first clue that something's happened for when my mom gets home. Let the thick smell of bleach meet her at the doorway like a force that'll usher her into the next chapter of Lane Kim's life. The smell of bleach is the smell of freedom. You're very dramatic today. Lane is another example of an Asian American character whose internal and external identity clashes with their cultural background. But I think it's important to note that Lane is based on a real person, Helen Pye, a producer and script coordinator on Gilmore Girls. The name of Lane's band, Hep Alien, is even an anagram of Helen's name. The rebellious Asian hair streak trope likely came about as a response to stereotypes of Asian Americans as submissive, nerdy, or unfuckable brainiacs. I mean, have you met the 80s? You know karate? Uh, no. Good. Upon its inception, the rebellious Asian trope probably seemed refreshing and subversive at the time. Finally, Asian American representation that depicted us as cool. But with so few examples of Asian characters in Western filmmaking, it ended up creating a weird dichotomy between the nerdy Asian character and the cool Asian. Asian nerds, cool Asians. In a way, the Asian hair streak trope ends up feeling like the racialized embodiment of I'm not like other girls, aka I'm not like other Asians. Truthfully, I feel a little bad criticizing this trope because there's minimal Asian American representation in Hollywood, and I don't love calling out some of these examples because, hey, at least Asian actors got jobs. That's unfortunately still a rarity in Hollywood. Of course, the problem with this trope isn't the fact that Asian characters dye their hair with brightly colored highlights. I have to admit that I too dabbled in having hair streaks in high school. Asian Americans on TikTok have even started riffing on this trope. TikTok users play the Knives Chow audio clip from Scott Pilgrim while dyeing their hair. Oh God, I look so good. It's actually great. The problem with this trope, for the most part, isn't actually the stereotypes themselves. Asian Americans who are nerdy and good at math and have strict parents exist, and it's not wrong to reflect that in media. Like I too am an Asian nerd who likes Sailor Moon and plays Nintendo games and got good grades in school. Sue me. And as evidenced by TikTok and Lane Kim's real life analog Helen Pye, Asian Americans with brightly colored hair streaks or a figurative streak of rebellion in their personalities exist too. The problem is when that becomes the only type of Asian character that we ever see depicted on screen. And the solution to that problem? Hire more Asian Americans in Hollywood. It's not that hard.